everyone, Maria Morales here with Low Kick MMA. And today I have the pleasure of being joined by Bellator's Chris Gonzalez. Chris, how are you today? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Pretty, pretty good. So, you know, as Chris shared with me uh, before we started recording, he's literally on his way back from training. Uh, and I can imagine like getting ready for fight week. There's a lot going on in your life right now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we're nine days out. So it's uh, right now it's just about staying healthy, getting the weight down and, um, you know, coming into fight week, healthy, in shape and and ready to go. Awesome. So, you know, on paper, it would look like you were about to face your biggest challenge to date in Gotia Yamauchi. Uh, but I need to ask you, do you feel like this is the biggest fight of your career thus far? Yeah, I mean, I feel like going into every fight, that's kind of the way it should be, right? Like, especially if you're continual, continuing on that ascent towards your ultimate goal, which would be, you know, a world title opportunity. Um, so I, I look at every fight as the most important fight. So absolutely, you know, Boyd is a vet. He's got 30 fights. He's been Bellator staple for um, shit years, for as long as I can remember. Uh, so I feel like this is a really good opportunity for me to, you know, assert myself and uh, make myself a contender. Absolutely. And and listen, like when you got the call for this fight, were you a bit surprised that you were getting someone that is so high up in the rankings? No, not, not at all, honestly. Uh, so going into contract negotiations um, prior to my last fight, he was one of the names that I threw out there that I expected to have to fight. Um, you know, like I said, I've been watching and he's been a staple in Bellator for as long as I can remember and um, it's guys like him that I expect to fight and uh, you know I feel like with the way my progression has been uh, you know, I've continually stepped up and fought better competition from you know top prospects to better fighters so now it's you know it was it, it's just time to fight someone that was the top 10 so I wasn't surprised uh, I was if anything expecting it and glad that I got the call yeah gotcha and you know I have to ask because I had I, I spoke to uh to Goichi yesterday. And it's always interesting when you're in these positions because everybody has something to gain and everyone has something to lose. So, you know, for him fighting someone that's not ranked when he's top five and so close to the belt, obviously he's got a lot to lose, but you come into this fight undefeated. Can you talk to me a little bit about how important that is for you and whether or not, you know, in that instance, you really look like you also have a lot to lose. Yeah, I mean, you always got a lot to lose when you're fighting uh, in front of an audience, right? You know, your, your pride's on the line, your, you know, your record's on the line, your health, your health is on the line. So uh, regardless of what your record is, there's always a lot on the line. But, uh, you know, being undefeated, that's not something that I really think about. You know, I come from a wrestling background and I've, I've had my fair share of losses. I haven't had too many, you know, but I've, I have had. I have had my uh, my share of losses, so um, I know it's a possibility. And you know, there's always somebody out there that's bigger, faster, stronger, or just a little bit better than you. Um, you know, I, I enjoy being undefeated. I'm uh, yeah, I'm sure do my best to stay that way, but uh, it's not something that I think about or that that worries me at all. Yeah, I mean, because for you, it it's it's the psychology of the game, right? Like not ha having had some of those losses, whether in your wrestling career or in your amateur career, you know what it feels like. So it's very different than somebody who maybe has never lost getting that very, very first loss. So do you feel like it gives you a little bit of an edge, maybe a little bit more mental toughness in that area? Uh, I mean, not really, not really. I mean, Gordy's a veteran, like he's fought top-notch competition you know I'm still early in my career I can't really uh compare my resume to a lot of these guys quite yet but it's fights like these that will allow me to 
do that and allowed me to take more pride in, in having that zero in my record. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if it gives me an edge at all. I'm, I'm very confident. Confidence comes from preparation. And I'm always well prepared. Um, so if anything, I'd say my confidence comes from, you know, just my training and uh, the sacrifices I've made on a day-to-day -day basis. For sure. And and let's talk a little bit about your training because, you know, obviously, as you've already stated, and, and for our viewers that may not know, you have a stellar uh, wrestling background in, in, in Greco-Roman, I believe, correct? Yeah, I... Uh... I had a really good run in the on the Greco world scene. I made the world team in 2016. Um, I was top eight in the world. Um, you know, I love wrestling. It's definitely got me to where I'm at now. And I've taken all those skills and life lessons and uh, training habits to the MMA world. And uh, it's translated really well. And it's made the transition really smooth. Absolutely. And so in preparing for this camp, because you're coming from an incredibly strong wrestling base, you know, Goichi is known for his submissions. Do you, I know you can't give us too much, right? Because we got to tune in and, and watch the fight. But in preparing for this fight, was there a focus around your wrestling at all? Or did you really try to look at some other areas of your game that you really wanted to work on to hopefully exploit Goichi's game? Yeah, I mean, every fight's different. Uh, you know, styles make fights. So if you mm -hmm. go into a fight with a striker, ideally you'd like to take him down and uh, to where he's maybe not going to be the strongest. Going against someone like Goity, obviously you got to be really smart when you do, if I do decide to take him down. Uh, but I can see myself winning this fight in a multiple, in multiple uh, ways. You know, I can see myself winning it on the feet. I can see myself taking him down and, you know, controlling the fight and, you know, staying in good position and not letting him uh, do what he's good at doing. So, so you know, either way, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to force to get the finish, you know, whether or not that happens. Uh, the ultimate goal is just to get my hand raised. And I can see myself doing that in a variety of ways. Absolutely. So let's switch gears, right? Because, again, I'm sure people ask you all of these types of questions about what you're gonna do in the fight and how you prepare for the fight all of the time. But I wanna to talk to you about something very, very serious. And that is food. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're a couple of days out from having to really start, you know, getting ready for that weight cut. I love it when I get to talk to fighters outside of fight week, because there's no way you can be happy when you're hungry. That said though, everybody has that one thing that they just have to have. So before you go into your weight cut, what is the one thing that you, you're like, yo, I just have to eat this before I get jumping into this weight cut? Yeah, you know, uh, most fighters probably do have something that they have to have before they go into a fight. But honestly, I don't really think I do. I mean, I eat good all year round. You know, I'm, eating, I'm eating steak, I'm eating sushi. And my diet really doesn't really change when I'm in camp all that much. Maybe a few less chicken wings here and there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, my diet's on point. I, I eat good. You know, um, I'm eating steak every day still. I'm still eating sushi. I'm, I'm eating all the things I love to eat. It's just, uh, you know, it's just a portion control, really. Right. Um, I'm not one of those fighters who blows up in between fights. I, I like to keep my diet pretty disciplined all year round. Um, I like to fight multiple times a year. Ideally, I'd be fighting three to four times a year. Um, so, you know, I'm never too far off uh, in weight. And my diet doesn't really change up that, that much. I know that's not really like an exciting, uh, revealing thing about myself. But, you know, I, uh, you know, I keep things pretty simple. No, listen, I get it. And I, I'm pretty sure that there are lots of, of men and women out there in the fight game that wish they had that type of discipline uh, that they could just be like, no, I'm good. I, I, eat, I eat what I eat all of the time. So that's, that's pretty cool. So the last thing that I want to ask you before I let you go, you know, obviously you're anticipating pulling out the victory in this fight. If that does come to fruition, what is it that you would, who would you like to see next? What would be next for Chris Gonzalez? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, once, you 
And once we get past this, this really tall hurdle and mountain in front of us, uh, I see there's a lot of opportunities. You know, the division's been pretty stagnant since Pitbull's been uh, mm -hmm. participating in the featherweight tournament that they have going on right now. Um, so I think once I, once, you know, we finish this fight and, you know, not only I get this victory, I can see myself, you know, being one more fight away from, from a title fight. Uh, I'm not sure if they're considering doing an interim title or anything like that. I don't really know because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Pitbull hasn't had the opportunity to defend his title since he's been defending his other one at the moment. Right, right. But, uh, you know, there's there's a few guys ahead of me that I can see myself matched up with, you know. Um, but it doesn't really matter, you know. I'm, I'm open to fighting any and everyone. I'm preparing every day for all of these guys. At one point or another, I'm probably going to have to fight them all anyway. So, um, you know, whoever Belcher wants me to fight, and as long as, you know, it's the kind of fight that gets me excited and, uh, you know, I'll sign that contract to fight anyone. So, um, Chris, I you know, hear we'll you. To, we'll have to do this one first, and then we'll have to see. Listen, Chris, I hear you, but you know, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I let you off the hook that easy. So you mentioned that you, you know, there are a couple of guys that you, there are ahead of you that you would be excited. Any names that you care to share? I mean, there's a ton. All of these guys excite me right now. Um, I feel like, you know, Miles Jury had a ton of hype coming in. Vincent Henderson's mm. a legend in the sport. You know, I'd yeah. love to test myself against some of these guys. I feel like a lot of the, the guys in the Bills for us don't get the credit that we deserve. Um, you know, they kind of play us like little brother to the UFC and I don't think that's the case I think that you know there's a bunch of us in Bellator where that can go over there and have a ton of success mm -hmm. and I'm one of those guys so you know um, you know if I got to get my crack at you know one of those former UFC guys to kind of show the world that you know we're not little brothers in any of these other organizations out there you know I'd love to have the opportunity to do that Absolutely. Well, listen, Chris, I'm going to let you go. Before I do, I never wish fighters good luck. I legit feel like that's an insult to all of the hard ass work that you guys do to get to where you are. So I just hope that all of your preparation pays off for you uh, in your fight. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Chris Gonzalez. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.